An individual's sense of social identity exists upon both their affirmation and challenging of societal expectation. Arthur Miller's McCarthyism-inspired play The Crucible, 1953, and Paul Anderson's oil boom period drama There Will Be Blood, 2007, both skillfully explore the struggle for individuality within a society. By discussing the exploitation of societal power via faux conformity and the need for positive reputation to avoid ostracism or persecution, both films effectively show the complex nature of their respective cast's attempts to maintain their individual social identity while not sacrificing the power and protection granted through conformity and the ways in which this shapes an individual identity. The guise of righteousness achieved via conformity to societal expectation is often used by individuals to disguise and empower their intentions through the backing of the collective, which further encourages their individual actions and discourages any would-be opponents to the collective's members. Within Miller's The Crucible, many characters are seen to hold high their own worldly motives which obstruct the process of justice and serve to greatly influence their personal and social identities. One such demonstration of this obstruction is the avaricious nature of Putnam's influence upon the witch trial. When instructing his daughter to accuse George Jacobs of witchcraft, Putnam conflates his personal goals for materialistic gain with the retributive justice of theocracy, thus advancing his own interests and power through the backing of the law, while simultaneously spinning his own enemies as enemies of the state and by extension of God. Furthermore, The Crucible effectively criticizes the contemporary society of McCarthy-era America through the implicit likening of said society to 1690s Salem. Miller effectively employs mise-en-scene to illustrate this by placing the theocratic persecutors such as Danforth and Putnam surrounding the smaller group of Giles and Proctor. This visually represents their powerlessness at the hands of the collective, while simultaneously displaying their determination to remain steadfast defenders of their beliefs, reinforcing the themes of maintaining individual identity in the face of adversity. Additionally, Miller utilizes repetition of the word proof, proof. proof. several times throughout this scene to emphasize the contrast between Danforth's search for his warped truth and the reality of the situation. This repetition also creates a form of irony, as the characters remain unaware that their attempts to discern the truth are doomed by their own need for absolute truth. Such techniques further demonstrate the power of Salem's courts over individuals, and how individuals can find great power through the affirmation of societal expectation. In a similar vein, There Will Be Blood's Daniel Plainview is seen to manipulate those around him through presenting an identity of affirmation to societal expectation to achieve his individualistic goals. Based upon Oil by Upton Sinclair, written in the wake of the Teapot Dome scandal, the exploitation of a collective's power for individual purposes, as in the bribery of respected and popular politician Albert B. Fall, was a highly relevant concept. In one scene, Daniel presents himself as a family man in an attempt to be granted oil drilling leases from a group of landowners. Here, director Paul Anderson utilizes dramatic irony through careful scene composition and camera techniques to illustrate the ulterior motives of Daniel to the audience, and yet not to the crowd surrounding him. The use of stage blocking, placing Daniel's adoptive son H.W. standing behind and to the side of Daniel, while Daniel sits in the center foreground of the frame, displays the unequal distribution of power between the two, and contrasts the words of Daniel, wherein he describes his alleged family business and bond. A family. Immediately following this declaration, Daniel assumes the perspective of the company, metaphorically representing it as an extension of himself, through stating, I'm fixed like no other company in this field. Daniel illustrates the lack of control held by HW by verbally taking full control of the company insofar as to meld it with himself in his speech. Through this, it becomes obvious to the audience that Daniel's presentation of himself as a family man is a farce employed to assume the power of the collective for his own individual desires, namely to fuel his lust for wealth and oil. Thus, the affirmation of societal expectation leads to the construction of Daniel's dichotomous identity, whereby he is socially a loving father, yet internally a heartless businessman. The commodification of reputation can lead to a greater need for an individual to conform under threat of ostracism or persecution. Within a society where a positive reputation leads to greater opportunities and power, personal identity is discouraged in the face of abject conformity to social expectation. Within Miller's The Crucible, the power of reputation is readily apparent, greatly influenced influencing the actions of its characters. The play opens with a conversation between Abigail and Paris, wherein they discuss, in part, Abigail's reputation in the town as entirely white and with no blush about my name. 
Through the placement of this discussion within the opening, Miller makes immediately clear to the audience the importance of reputation among Salem's residents. Furthermore, Miller utilizes a clever double metaphor to prompt further thought from the audience. The white versus blush nature of Abigail's name creates a visual representation of the alleged purity of white against the starkly contrasting redness of shame or sin, emphasizing again the importance of reputation within the play, and how it shapes the suspicions and identity of the characters of Salem. In addition, Miller's use of red to represent shame or poor reputation implicitly evokes a relation to the red scare of McCarthyism. This links the importance of reputation in Salem to the contemporary audience of the Crucible, and illustrates how one's identity as perceived by others can hold great power over the individual, thus encouraging conformity. Similarly, the baptism of Daniel Plainview in There Will Be Blood serves to emphasize this same theme, yet features differences in the effects of pressure towards conformity. In this scene, Daniel is blackmailed into confessing his sins and being initiated into the Church of the Third Revelation, led by Eli Sunday. The use of stage direction makes apparent the power dynamic within the scene, with Eli standing and walking while Daniel is kneeling. The dialogue in this scene further illustrates this, with Daniel's few lines being parroted back from Eli. Contrastingly to Miller's play, however, is Daniel's admission to sin. Rather than repeatedly deny his misdeeds, as Abigail would, Daniel admits to them repeatedly to the crowd. Through the use of his increased volume and angry tone, it becomes apparent that this confession deeply affects Daniel. In this sense, There Will Be Blood illustrates how the pressures of societal expectation can lead to positive changes in personal identity. As Daniel begins to understand the immorality of his actions, via the destruction of his reputation. Through an exploration of the power of conformity and the value of reputation within society, both the Crucible and There Will Be Blood effectively demonstrate how one's sense of identity and status within a society is derived from both the affirming and challenging of social expectations. Through the application of various literary techniques and textual devices, both texts exemplify the struggle between maintaining individuality and conforming to societal expectation, and how this can lead to conflict between the individual and the world around them. Because of this, it is clear that a combination of both affirmation and challenging of social expectations shape an individual's identity and sense thereof.